Hello, I'm Lucas Horrocks and welcome to part 14 of my Cydia campaign on Rome Total War. Now, you may be wondering why I'm not actually on the Rome Total War screen while I'm watching a video. The reason is I'm going to have to do a post commentary on this video because I could not get the audio and the visual to sync up in editing. It was madness. I spent ages trying to do it. I recorded this video ages ago and I've been trying to sort it out and I wasn't able to and then I got ill. So I thought rather than put out no video at all or a substand video, I should just put a post commentary of this Sidia video up. So yeah, we're going to be watching uh, part 14 of the Sidia campaign in post commentary. Now, if you remember last time we had a large, large fight, which was very, very good by the way, um, against the Scipii outside of Apollonia. And we also defeated the Macedons, they are no longer a thing, so Macedon's no longer a faction. And we are now being attacked by Silurus outside of Aquincum. He just attacked us, so let's have a watch of this. So as you can see, we are outside of Aquincum. We aren't on the actual bridge, I believe, I'm not sure, we'll see that in a second. Um, but yeah, Silurus has indeed attacked us. It's not a strong Dacian force in particular, we have much better troops, but... We have absolutely no infantry, so as soon as everyone runs out of their missiles, they'll pretty much become useless. So as you can see, Silurus has himself and three warband, which is a, a solid, solid front line, better than ours anyway, but we have, I would say we have the better troops, it's just that whether we can actually defeat them purely by using missiles. And of course, victory here will surely clear the path to Aquincum. If you look at it, it's relatively undefended. So this is quite an important fight. If we want to grind the Dacians down, they haven't got a lot of settlements left. If we want to grind them down, this is what we need to do. We need to win this battle. So here we go. We're going to uh, start the deployment in a second. It's a little bit uh, snowy, but nothing we can do about it because we are on the defensive. So we cannot choose when the battle takes place. But here we go. So as per usual, I'm going to put the heavy cavalry at the back. There's the general at the back, and then all the missile troops are going to be at the front, and they're all going to be on skirmish mode, uh, and all on a loose formation. I accidentally selected some barbarian cavalry there, but yeah, that's going to be the plan, basically. So the heavy cavalry is going to probably be used on the flank, just to sort of mop up any routing troops, or if there's a weak, isolated troop, try and get them to route, and then get a mass route going. Um, other than that, they're not going to do a huge amount. The Cydian horse archers, particularly, are going to do the bulk of the heavy lifting. So here we are, they are the Dacians over there, and it's going to take them a while to get to us, so we're going to move forward slightly, just to sort of combat that and to save time. And I'm going to put my cavalry on the flank, just so they're more useful, because they're not going to be charging straight into the uh, warband, that's for sure. Okay, so we're now starting to engage with them, and we're just going to skirmish back and forth. The most dangerous unit, of course, is the bodyguard, because they can actually chase off the Scythian horse archers. So I'm moving my cavalry on the flank, as you can probably see towards him, there, there right at the front is the uh, general's bodyguard, dangerously close to a unit of horse archers, so we need to get into the back of their general and take him down. Uh, once the general's down, we're pretty much fine, but unfortunately the barbarian cavalry has not managed to keep up with the general, and they're taking ages to get to the general's bodyguard, who is now chasing off the Scythian horse archers, as you can see, and we are being chased off by warbands. So, as we are either side of the warband, I decide to attack them from both sides, which isn't a brilliant use of the cavalry because, you know, I didn't want to use them against them. I wanted to use them against a barbarian warlord, as you can see. But we did get them routing pretty much straight away, so that worked in our favour. But now, of course, he is chasing off um, our Illyrians. He is fast in the Illyrians, so he is a big threat. So what I've decided to do is just to get everyone into the melee. No nonsense. Um, that unit is done for. We couldn't, we couldn't help in time, unfortunately. We had to sacrifice a unit there, but once our general and our barbarian cavalry engage with their general, we should be okay. We actually got the other unit routing without meaning to, which is pretty good as well. So the Scythian horse archers can now melee fight them and the Illyrians because uh, they're no longer a threat. They are running away. And the Illyrians and the barbarian cavalry and the general... Barbarian Warlord, are all going to attack their Dacian Barbarian Warlord. So unfortunately, a unit of Warband got in the way, so we have to go and take that down before we can go and take the General down, unfortunately. That's how it works, but we will be able to get him down very quickly. As you can see, he's already wavering. Three units are on him. Three superior units. And now our pretty much only focus, the whole Dacian army is routing, 
It's just a matter of getting the general down. Unfortunately, we couldn't do that a bit earlier because we were just getting distracted by units of warband. But at least the warband went down very, very quickly, which is good. So there's the warlord, and he's actually got 26 heavy cavalry, so he's decent. And our general's only got seven men left, including himself. So um, we are slightly weak. We need to take him down very, very quickly and get more units involved in the fight. And in fact, as you can see, the barbarian cavalry is routed. The general's about to rout. In fact, the general's about to die if he carries on like this. So I decided to get him out of there, as you can see. And then, <laughs> and then exactly that moment, uh, the battle finishes. So we now need to get the barbarian warlord down quickly. If he runs away, that will be a bit of an issue because the army will still stand. And as you, you can see, he runs off. He starts to run off in a good direction, then he decides to run off into all our horses and he won't survive long against Sydney horse archers firing arrows at him, that is for sure. And there you go, he's down, so yeah. Clear victory, 352 kills to 160, we killed Silurus, that's pretty solid and surely the path to Quinkum has opened up, we shall see. Okay, so the turn is still going on by the way, uh, the Spanish are talking. The rebels, and these are the rebels from Themyscira, they came out to say hello, and I did not realise how many there were going to be, and the balance of power, so I do indeed decide to back off, because experienced chariots, 54 apiece in a unit, uh, we can't deal with that, we're just two Sydney horse archers, so we decide to back off. Unfortunately, they continue to chase us, so it's a foregone conclusion we're going to lose, so I auto resolve just because there's no point, and we get uh, zero kills, which is uh, pretty, pretty solid, yeah, well done there. So... That was the end turn. Uh, we won't look at the end of turn report. Stoic philosophy, if anyone cares, probably not, but there we go. So, the path to Quincum is pretty much open, but in fact, they've still got two generals and three warbands, so I kind of underestimated the amount that they have in a Quincum. Um, but that's, I think, is the second to last Dacian sediment, so really important we take that just to get them off the map. Yeah, as you see, Lovacy is Dacian as well, as far as I can tell, anyway. So, we are going to merge units up. There are some mercenaries available, and they are decent. Bastar and I are decent, but they're very expensive. Um, so I'm not sure if they're entirely worth it. So I'm going to uh, leave that for another time to see if we need them later. But I'd rather not use them at the moment. Um, Segestica, we're going to move a few troops over from Segestica just to help out, I think, maybe. But we go over and besiege a Quincum. And as you can see, the gates are open because we have a spy that's infiltrated the settlement, which is pretty good. Um, not exactly what I expected. I, I wanted to bring more reinforcements over, but yeah, there we go. Fate had it that we were meant to enter the city. So let's have a look if we assault it. The balance of power is relatively even. Palacus has 434 men, but those two units of heavy cavalry are tough to deal with indeed. There is no doubt about that. Uh, and we have basically no infantry. We could have got those Bastani, I am aware, but even then, like two units of Bastani aren't going to do a huge amount to Barbarian Warlord, um, just because faction leader is strong, the faction leader is strong indeed, so I'm going to hold out there for a while, probably just wait for reinforcements, but I'm not going to fight that straight away, there is a small Germanian army there as well as you can see, and we might get help from Segestica if we need it, but of course there was a big Julia army, don't know where they've gone, but they were hanging around Segestica last episode, they didn't attack which is good, but I don't want to move too many troops out of Segestica and Salona just in case they're still there. Either way though, <laughs> I do send a troop over to Aquincum, so I suppose apparently not. Now Salona moves a few troops to Segestica to sort of uh, nullify that, and as you can see, Amulius Julius is now spotted. So we are now in their zone of control, and Salona is unhappy. And I can't lower the tax rate, so we're going to have to recruit some stuff just to uh, keep them happy for the, the meantime. But at least now we know where uh, the Julii are. It's not a hugely strong army, but they still could take Segestica and Salona at the moment, so we do need to reinforce those settlements greatly, indeed. Now, as for Greece, we have Parachua, and this is a pretty solid army. Uh, we just merged them up. This was the army that fought the Scipio at the end of last episode. Apollonia is very safe now. now. We have a decision. Do we go for the Greeks, do we go for the Julii, or do we advance against the Brutii in Italy? It's a tough decision uh, to make. But I'm going to have a look at my other armies, and you can, as you can see, there are a few units around Corinth, Sparta, Athens, and Larissa. That's a pretty decent sized army, that one there, um, which was probably big enough to take on Termon. Now, Termon has Cleon of Sparta, this decent sized army. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty solid army, but mostly hoplites, of course, Greeks are, which are vulnerable to Macedonian horse archers purely because they're uh, not very uh, agile. 
and we have hoplites of our own of course through mercenaries so I'm going to bring these guys over at the very least as you can see Doros of Sparta has a small army there so don't particularly want to get involved with him we might have to push him back if necessary I'm going to get these three guys to come over as well important to bring in a uh, unit of infantry because we're going to attack the city we need someone to hold the rams and then I'm also going to look at Larissa there's a general there some few axemen I'm just going to bring the cavalry, I think, because that is what I want to do. Yeah, the cavalry is what makes the Scythians so strong. And looking at Thessalonica, Thessalonica has some really good troops in it. So I'm now going to decide who to bring over where. So we have some Scythian noble archers. These two guys, um, it seems like, are going to go south towards Madies and fight the Greeks in Terman because we need some strong units there and then we have two other units some Scythian nobles and some Scythian noble archers and they're going to head over to Apollonia so Thessalonica is completely undefended but we'll manage to get some troops over from Bylosaura uh, and Tylus over so uh, it, that's fine we'll, we'll sort that out pretty easily I imagine and incidentally we can now recruit headhunting maidens in Bylosaura a female unit rare to see uh, in Rome Total War but yeah, uh, good morale, powerful charge. They're pretty solid unit, and I'd like to try them out at some point. So I'm going to, yeah, just do a variety of horse archers and headhunting maidens over in Bylazora, and they'll be heading down south to deal with the Greeks and the Brutii, and possibly the Julii as well, depending on where they decide to move. So at this point, I want to start getting troops over to the Italian mainland. Parachua and his army get onto the boat, and we are now going to sort of scout out Tarentum and Croton, I believe. So... We're going to have a look at Trentum, and as you can see, we are stuck in the zone of control of a Brutii Navy, one which is much stronger than ours, as you can see from there. So we need to get our army off. We have no choice now. They have to get onto the mainlands because they do not want to be stuck in a naval battle against the Brutii. Uh, and you can see in Croton, there's Scipii outside there as well, so they do have a bit of support. But all these guys are going to step off out of the zone of control into Trentum. As you can see, Trentum isn't that strong so we should be able to take it relatively easily unless they conjure some reinforcements out of nowhere but bear in mind they threw a lot of their strength against us in Apollonia the Brutia aren't that strong and they haven't got any of Greece or any of that so I reckon we'll do okay over there and it's nice to get a diplomat down south or somewhere we are we are trying to get a diplomat Okay, so that's the Brutio I dealt with. Now, Madiez has a decent sized army, as we said, and he's going to head towards Doros of Sparta and the lands of Terman, but he's going to probably wait for some reinforcements, I would imagine. We don't want to, you know, go too quickly against the Greeks, but he's run out of movement points anyway, so that'll probably be next episode we fight against the Greeks. Hopefully, try and eliminate them from the area. They still have territory in the Middle East and Turkey and probably um, Sicily as well, but as long as they're not too near us, I'm not too bothered. And then Germanians as well, we're at war with a lot of factions. We now have to choose where we advance. There are Bastani available here as well, uh, which is interesting. But I am going to uh, look at how many units are in each town. We only have four units ourselves uh, and four okay units. It's not a very strong army though uh, at all. But we are going to go towards Vickers Gothite and we've been ambushed by Captain Rudolf. That's a pretty cool name. Screeching Women, Warband, uh, some terrible cavalry of the, the Germanians. It's relatively even in terms of the strength ratio, so we should be fine, but we do have the less men. Either way, we do decide to engage with them. So the important thing here is taking out the Screeching Women because um, they are going to be annoying uh, because they have a morale bonus for the other troops, which means they'll be able to strike harder. So if we get rid of the, rid of the uh, Screeching Women, then the morale it's going to uh, go down massively for the other troops like the Phalanx Warband and the Cavalry, meaning we'll be able to strike harder with our general against them. So, as you can see, they're sort of like hiding in the woods, but the Phalanx are very, very slow indeed. Okay, so we're just firing our arrows at the Phalanx Warband, but the two melee units are going to go for the Screeching Women. They will not be able to stand up in a fight, or they shouldn't be able to anyway. And we need to get them down. The Barbarian Cavalry decides to run away, which is not particularly noble of them, but there we go. And they are going to chase after our Scythians, which is, a, which is tough, because they're light cavalry, and they will be able to do a decent job in the melee against them, because they are just as fast. Anyway, one of the units of Screeching Women goes down, so I decide to go after the Barbarian Cavalry, but I don't want to charge right into a Phalanx. That is a bad idea. 
So the Barbarian Cavalry look like they're charging towards us, so we need to go and charge towards them. And they should break pretty quickly, they are not strong at all, they are a weak light cavalry unit, and they should not be in a fight against the general, but in fact they're doing a decent job, they've killed a few of the general's bodyguard, I'm very surprised by that. They're wavering, but they're not broken yet, and, and then they finally, finally break. So now, the screeching women have come up the rear um, of the infantry and the general, so we need to take them down now as well, while the Scythian horse archers go for the phalanx uh, troops, and they're holding strong the Screeching Women, they have very low stats, but they, they're only wavering, they're not even going down that slowly considering their stats, but eventually, eventually they do. So now we can just focus on the Spear Warband to get them down, the other unit of Phalanx Warband or Spear Warband uh, are very, very, they're, they're very, very depleted at this point. Not much, but the main focus is getting the Screeching Women down so they're no longer a threat to us uh, in terms of their morale bonus. Okay, so we're literally just chasing the last of the Screeching Women while being chased also by a Phalanx, which is pretty interesting. But the Scythian Horse Archer seems to be doing a decent job against the um, uh, the Phalanx over there, which is good. There's literally one single woman left, and she's about to be taken down by some cavalry, which is a beautiful sight to see. Now I need to manoeuvre myself around the phalanx so that we don't charge straight into the spears. What I'm probably going to do is um, charge from either side and try to get them to route like that. They are already shaken and then a charge into the back makes them broken so yeah, relatively easy to deal with there. And then it's one final unit of phalanx which are already shaken so a good charge into the rear should, should sort them out. There is also a few Barbarian Cavalry remaining because they've managed to rally, which is a bit annoying. So a lot of chasing later, and our General has engaged with the Barbarian Cavalry. Should do a solid job there, but actually loses a few units of a uh, few men. Um, but we have managed to rout the Barbarian Cavalry. They are no longer a factor in this battle. So it's now just a matter of dealing with the Spear Warband. Still 47 of them left, and we don't have a lot, but they did indeed rout. So we were fine in the end. So we basically taking out the last few units. A very solid victory against the Germanians here. Uh, and that surely will free up the path to Vickers Goth. I surely would hope so. And there we go. Heroic victory. That's a bit of an overstatement. Um, but uh, yeah. It's... Uh, it's still pretty good victory indeed, and now Vickers Gothai, there are seemingly no armies from here to there, which is good. So Artavast, um, can, we're looking at the mercenaries, but I'm, I'm tempted, but no. Let's just go straight for Vickers Gothai. Unfortunately, we cannot get it this turn, uh, and it will take two turns to build a ram, which is slightly disappointing. So, there we go. Okay, so I think we've pretty much done everything we need to do for this turn. Um... It, you know, it looks like it looks like we are, are done indeed. So let's end the turn, and immediately we are attacked by the Brutii, Aulus Classicus, and Opius Brutus have attacked Parachua outside of Trenton, which is interesting. So they they did come up with an army out of nowhere, which is something I suspected they would, knowing the Romans. But a good good win here, and um, and it would be devastating for the Brutii. They have some decent units, Triarii, Hastati, some Hoplite, Equus has basically nothing, but they are a bit annoying. As for Opius Brutus, he has himself, another unit of Heavy Cavalry, and some Principes. So, actually, kind of tough, to be honest, to deal with. Because we have no infantry, we have no melee units apart from our faction leader, Parachua. So, yep, yeah, it's not going to be easy, it's not going to be easy at all, but I want to take the Brutii down, that's the thing. So we decide to go for it. We are on the open plains of Italy, and we're going to do pretty much the same as usual, which is, um, there is a large rock there, by the way, uh, which is interesting, but I don't think it will really help us out of Scythia. If this was the mercenary campaign, I probably would use that rock. Uh, that is for sure. But yeah, we're just going to try and pepper them with arrows. We're using our heavy cavalry tactically. we we'll put them in their separate group. Using our heavy cavalry tactically to... Um, pick off isolated units, isolated and vulnerable units. And there are the Romans indeed, so we are going to uh, move off into the distance. It's slightly laggy there because of uh, uh, the amount of units, and I put it on a massive speed. It's all good. And yeah, it's now just a matter of picking off weak units. I'm looking at those uh, artillery, um, particularly the Welletes, the War Dogs. There are weak units there, but there are also some strong units. But they won't be that strong against Scythian horse archers because they're so hard to catch which is what Scythia is notorious for. 
So I'm getting my cavalry to move towards the more vulnerable units. And there is a unit of, I think, Welites who are charging towards us or walking towards us. But uh, I'm not bothering with engaging in them. But unfortunately, we do anyway, it seems, which is annoying. I did not want to do that. So get out of there, lads. That's it. And move towards the ballistas. This is what I want to get rid of. Ballistas are annoying, but they're pretty easy to take down. Uh, unfortunately, this general's not been very responsive. Parachua, the faction leader, went completely the wrong direction. And then what happened is the Roman cavalry get involved right at the wrong time when I wanted to get on the blisters. So we decided to surround him and immediately loads of people were chasing us. It's a little bit disastrous. But a good charge in from Parachua brings the general down to 18 men and shaken. But then Brutii surround us on all sides. So what looked like it was going to be a good move for us actually ends up being a terrible move because the AI was very, very clever. So we now need to get these Equites down. Um, the Roman general is fleeing, which is good. Equites shouldn't be that difficult to take down. We're taking a huge amount of losses to our only heavy cavalry, which is not good at all. Not good in one bit. We are completely surrounded, and we didn't even manage to get the general down, which is frustrating. And then both of our units, both of our generals, uh, are, fi are fleeing fleeing the battlefield in fact Artazias died as you can see there and then also Parachua but the fight goes on uh, we still have a lot of men yeah it was um it, it was poor decision making for me I, I will admit but I think we were unlucky the way they just absolutely swarmed us so I'm speeding it forward a little bit there you can see it was a little bit um, shuddery I just want to um, kill as many of them with the arrows as possible basically um, we are managing to run away with, uh, against them relatively uh, successfully at least though which is good but unfortunately one of the units were actually fighting in the melee which means they've gone down a bit in numbers but as you can see there the uh, general uh, Aulus Classicus died so that's good we managed to get one out of three generals down one of them fled one of them still alive and uh and there we go. So, so far, it's two generals for one, which isn't good. It's not in our favour. But we are managing to win the battle. And we're killing a lot more of them than they're killing of us, which is good. We just unfortunately threw away the heavy cavalry at a very inopportune moment. So what I'm getting now is the Scythian horse archers to capture the routed units. To get them down. Make sure they don't return against us, because they're very likely to. And then just dealing with the final few units. But actually, what turned out from a disastrous start has actually meant that we've... We've killed two Brutii armies, pretty much. It's just getting that Roman general down, which would be nice to do at this point. As you can see, the general routed, which I, I was surprised about. I thought he was going to cause more trouble, but we actually did very, very well. Now get all the Scythian horse archers to chase after him, make sure he gets down. So we're just chasing down the final few Brutii uh, uh, movements, and there we go, the end of the battle, but we will continue to try and get as many of them down, we do not want them returning back to Tarentum, because we're going to have to fight them at some point, rather fight them here while they are fleeing the battlefield, that would be pretty good, indeed, and we get the last man down, there we go, and that was actually a general we killed, Opius Brutus, so two generals for two, we got 1,100 kills, they got about 280, 270, yeah, I mean, not ideal, um, but we did get a very convincing win. It was just not ideal that our faction leader and another general died. But they're replaceable at least, I suppose. Unfortunately, the Scipii decide they want a bit of it. And that's really annoying, basically. Um, Captain Madiez against Lucius Scipio. A relatively similar army as we just fought. But of course, we're now depleted and without a general. Or without two generals. So I have to back off. Back onto that ship. But we will get reinforcements. We will go back and take revenge against the Scipio. It was very annoying that he did that though. Um, good bit of AI movement there, I have to admit. So the rest of the turn, Julii attack the uh, navy outside of Apollonia, which is slightly annoying as well. But we managed to get a close victory out of nowhere. Who knows? Um, the Julii went for, uh, north towards the Gestica, which is interesting. We might have to reinforce that place a bit. And Captain Madiez, who um, fought up against, I think, Germania or something. Um, yeah, he's... He uh, is now a general, which is good. It means the Parachute is essentially replaced. But Artavast, just as we were about to take a Quincum, becomes a turncoat. Absolutely unbelievable. So we were finally about to take a Quincum. We've been trying to take about three or four episodes, but the armies keep coming along the way. And now Artavast became Julii. Ah, oh, I mean, that is 
That's really annoying. So, and they took the whole army with us. So, basically, our only army that was fighting the Dacians, the King Julii, which really, really annoying, really annoying. Um, the, the damn Julii. So, they will regret that, though. I will make them regret that, but very frustrating. But we need to get troops over and kill that turncoat, that is for sure. So, I'm getting a few units over from Campus Lazarges, I believe, yep. Uh, unit of Scythian Horse Archers. These guys can come up north and join them. They're going to stay on the bridge for protection. But yeah, we're we going to get him down, don't you worry, next episode. So adoption not completed, because the, the person who was going to adopt Captain Madlias then decides to be Julii, so the adoption did not complete, meaning we did not get a general, which is annoying. Plague in Macedonia. I didn't even click where it was, so I'm not entirely sure where it's probably Thessalonica. I'm not sure. Town grows up here. Cool, getting my high king's hall or whatever. I don't know what it is. Uh, that's all good. Uh, yeah, turncoat army, of course, as you saw, and the enemy army routes. But I think that is going to be pretty much the end of the episode. We're going to move towards the Greeks, Madiez, uh, and his two reinforcements, who are look pretty, looking pretty solid. Uh, Larissa actually has some decent troops in it as well. But yeah, Madiez is stepping into Greek territory. Of course, we are at war with the Greeks, so. Uh, this probably isn't too much of a surprise to them, indeed. So we're just making sure we get all the movement points right. Because we can have a big, big fight against the Greeks at the beginning of the next episode, I'm sure. So, uh, Madiez first attacks, but the reinforcements are going to come in as well. As you can see, it's a relatively strong army we've got, but there's a lot of Greeks, um, which is annoying. And then I realised we probably should have brought a few generals, because there was four in Athens. Uh, which is slightly frustrating, so... Um, I think I do manage to find a way of getting them all over by using the navy, if I'm correct. Yeah. So, get on the boat, that's it. Surely I brought over the generals as well. Apparently not. Apparently I did not bring over the generals, I decided not to. Just wanted to bring over uh, another unit of Scythian horse archers, so fair enough, I suppose. Did not want to bring the generals. So, Madiez, next time, will fight Doros of Sparta and Tiganos of Sparta. And somebody else I didn't see in time. But yeah, mostly hoplites. That army's basically nothing. Antigonus of Sparta is mostly hoplites and some pretty terrible units. That's okay. And Cleon of Sparta. Again, nothing particularly amazing. The difficulty is going to be the heavy cavalry. Um, that will be a little bit frustrating. But I think we could get a victory there. Or at least, even if we don't win, uh, kill a lot of their units. Yes. Also, we're going to take Vickers Gothai. I believe. So, uh, that, unfortunately, because the ram took two turns, we can't quite get that yet, but we will very soon. And, of course, we need to get revenge on the Scipii. Now, what I was thinking of is just go, well, okay, the, the Scipii are going to help Trenton, we'll go for Croton then. I think that's a relatively sensible idea. They've left Croton, fine, we'll go over and take Croton then. So, that's basically what I'm doing. But, then I realise we have no infantry, so we can't, basically. So... I'm going to build some siege equipment, but we need to ship some infantry over before we can actually take Crotons. That might take a couple of turns, unfortunately, uh, because as usual, I forgot to bring a unit of infantry. But these two guys are going to head over to Apollonia, and they're going to come over and help. Yeah, we, we need to get a unit of barbarian peasants just to hold the ram. That's all we need, just for them to hold the ram. So these two guys are going to come over and help Admiral Tigranes. I thought, I thought Tigranes was a, an Armenian name, but apparently not. But anyway, um, yeah, so he's going to come over. So hopefully within, the, well, potentially in the next turn, we can go and take Croton, which is good. Um, and then we'll we'll re we'll uh, reevaluate, we'll reinforce, and then we'll go and take the Scipii out, and then take Trentum, and then probably um, Capua as well. Because, yeah, they decided to be a bit annoying. But yeah, Artavazd, really disappointing Artavazd. He was our main fighting force against the Dacians and now he decides to leave us but he will he will pay for that don't you worry so at the end of the next episode or the beginning of the next episode as I should have said uh, yeah this big big fight against the Greeks is going to occur um, it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be interesting uh, the main threat is the heavy cavalry it's not the hot plights which is the usual problem with the Greeks it is the heavy cavalry but I have confidence that we are going to do it so there we go as the screen ends I'll just move it to here. Yeah, um, that is the end of this episode. I'm sorry that it was a post-commentary. It's not something I like to do in general. But, um, yeah, I, I couldn't get the audio and the visual to sync. And I thought it was a lot better just sort of showing you the content. But in sort of post-production. So, there we go. Anyway, I'll be back with more videos of this. 
uh, the Bad Economy Challenge, the Mercenary Challenge, and the Faction Guides very, very soon. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you around.